Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be so much fun. I am sharing with you guys a full face of makeup that is every bit as good is high end. These are some of my favorite drugstore and affordable makeup products. Some of them are newer, others I've been using for years, but we're putting them all together to the test today because these are really the things that I think compete with some of my favorite high end products. Maybe their packaging isn't as good, but the products themselves are fantastic. So we're gonna go through it all together today. Hope you guys are excited about it. I always love raving about drugstore makeup. Before we get into all the makeup though, I wanna give a special welcome to my new visitors. Thank you for stopping by. Please consider subscribing to my channel before you leave and make sure your notifications are turned on. And with that said, we have got a lot of makeup to put on, so let's get right to it. All right, so we are gonna skip a primer today. I did just put on some moisturizer and honestly I don't try out or switch out my primers very often, but let's start with a foundation. And the foundation I have picked for today is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Serum Foundation. I know I have talked about this foundation before, but I was noticing something the other day as I was browsing new foundation releases and just highly rated foundations on Ulta's website. This foundation has fantastic reviews, both on the Ulta website and also over on Amazon, more so than most foundations. So we're taking number 40, Natural Buff, that's my shade. I just have a little dollop pair on the back of my hand and we're gonna apply it with a brush. I have noticed that most foundations tend to end up with the same rating, right around four stars, no matter where you're looking, on Sephora, on Ulta, no matter the brand, high-end or drugstore, it seems like most foundations end up falling around that four star mark. This one had much higher ratings than that. I want to say it was closer to four and a half or 4.6. And you don't see that very often. I think because foundations can be so polarizing, what works for one person is not going to work for everyone. Everyone has a different skin type. Shade selection can be a challenge with foundations, coverage preferences. I mean, it's just it just varies from person to person so much. So I was fascinated to see that this one had such good ratings. I love this foundation. I've loved it for a long time, but every time I pull this foundation back into my rotation, I'm always surprised again how flattering it looks on my skin. And maybe that's because I'm a little bit older. It just has great coverage. It covers up what I need to, but it's not a heavy foundation. It's very liquidy and lightweight, but it's not too heavy or cakey or creasy. It looks nice on the skin for as much coverage as it gives. And I do think it's a really good dupe or alternative to the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue. Very close formulas. I'm just gonna take my sponge. I always like to do this no matter what foundation I'm going with, just to make sure I don't get any gathering around my hairline, around my eyebrows, and around my jawline. So my foundation's nice and blended. A dead giveaway when you have some foundation that gathers up in your hair. Okay, let's move on to a concealer. So the concealer I selected is the Flower Beauty Serum Concealer. This concealer is quickly rising to the top of my all-time favorite concealers, both drugstore and high-end. It has the most incredible high coverage, but it's very thin and liquidy and lightweight, kind of like what I said about the foundation. It wears really well. You do not need a lot of this concealer to get really good coverage, which is what I love so much about it. So I have two shades that I tend to mix together to get the best shade match for me, light, medium, and ivory. So I'm gonna mix these equal parts on the back of my hand. For those of you that haven't been watching my channel for longer, kind of new here, Flower Beauty, if you are not aware, is probably my all-time favorite drugstore brand. They, I just love their products across the board. I have so many things from them that have made it into my very top favorites and not just in one category. They have primers that I love, foundations that I love, eyeshadows that I love, mascaras, lip products, cheek products. Honestly, they are such a great brand. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this, just starting with my fingers and tap it on my little under eye pocket right there. A little bit around my nose. I have a couple of like, I don't know what I tried while I was out in California or what, but I have like a couple spots around my lips, which is a really odd place to get breakouts for me. So I don't think I tried anything new. I try not to bug them. I try to be very careful around my lips, not to be too pinchy with things because I'm starting to get those aged lip lines. I don't wanna do filler or anything like that, so I wanna just kinda of take good care of my lips and just leave them be, let them heal. Seriously, you guys, that is such a small amount. I know I haven't blended it in yet, but you just do not need very much of this concealer and it just covers so well. As far as my favorite high-end concealer, that would have to be the Dior Forever Skin Concealer which has excellent coverage as well, but that one is a little bit thicker of a concealer. It can get a little bit more cakey if you're not careful, 
This one I think is just a little bit more user friendly as far as it just not being quite as thick or heavy of a formula, but still giving you that high level of coverage. I just think their shade range is probably far inferior to Dior's shade range, but if you can find a couple of match, a couple of shades to get a good match for you, the formula is great. I'm just gonna take a little bit extra because the eyeshadow I have today is a little bit on the, I don't have a lot of light shades in the little palette that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna take a little bit extra of the lightest shade of concealer and just add that to my eyelids. Mostly like under the brow. Just kind of highlight and add a bit more base for my eyeshadows. Speaking of eyeshadows, how many of you guys still use an eyeshadow primer? I used to be a diehard eyeshadow primer user and I just slowly over the years kind of abandoned eyeshadow primers. I think it is partly because as I've gotten older and my skin has gotten drier, the creasing issues I used to have with eyeshadow, I'm not having as much now that I'm a little bit older. So I don't feel like I need a heavy duty long wearing eyeshadow primer like I did when I was in my 30s. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of powder. So I'm just gonna use my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. I love this powder. I'm not much of a powder user. I just kind of use what works for me and this one is cheap and it's great. So this isn't really in this video because it compares to something high-end because honestly I just don't try out high-end powders. It's not something I choose to spend my money on. You got to make cuts somewhere. We all have our line or our limits and powders are where I draw draw mine. Just use something cheap that works. Here we go. Let's go on to bronzer. So I picked something different for bronzer. This one is kind of new to me. It was a newer discovery this year. I have other bronzers that I think are as good as high end that I featured in the past. My Flower Beauty Heatwave bronzer I love. The Milani bronzer I really love. I have a few from e.l.f. that I love. But this is the Physicians Formula Butter Contour Palette. This was actually sent to me by Physicians Formula this last year. And I really love this. It's kind of a good mix between a bronzer and a contour. I mean, you do get this nice light contour shade here. This one is a much deeper shade, but I actually like combining these two shades together and kind of doing a simultaneous sculpting and warming at the same time. So that's what we're going to do today. By the way, it smells amazing, just like the butter bronzer does, which I do also love. That's another one of my favorites. So for this one, let me take my Alter Ego brushes today. I'm gonna take this big fluffy powder brush. We're just gonna dip into the darkest brown shade here, by the way, this is the lighter palette. They also have a deeper version for those of you with more medium to deep skin tones. It is a little bit loose and powdery and kind of messy, which is the only thing about this that I'm not wild about. Sorry, I forgot to blend this little spot right there. So we're just gonna tap this on my cheeks, but I can deal with it. I don't love this packaging so much either. It's funny because I actually don't like their bulkier packaging. Although it's high quality, it's just very bulky. This one's a lot more sleek, but it's just kind of cheap filling. But that's okay. The product inside is really, really great. Look how great of a bronzer shade that is. And you can kind of, if you have more fair skin, you can go more with this shade right here. If you're a little bit on the light medium side, you can go more with the darker shade. All right, let's move on to a blush. So I picked two. Today I wanted to stick with a powder blush. I know I've talked about some cream blushes that I love before, particularly my Flower Beauty blushes, but I know not everyone loves cream blushes. So I wanted to mention a couple of powder blushes that I think are just as good as my very favorite high-end powder blushes. I have two I want to mention because I couldn't decide between these two. First off, the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in the shade Berry Cheeks. I've talked about this one more recently. Towards the end of the year, this made it into a lot of favorites videos. It is so so good great luminous formula that kind of kind of like gives a nod to the hourglass formula somewhat similar to that kind of sheen that those give and then also this one right here i feel like this is one of the most underrated blushes at the drugstore that is so cheap it's from the brand revolution this is their blushed duo this one is in the kindness shade and it's this blush right here the highlighter i don't love so much but this blush, you guys, is one of the prettiest blushes that I own, the prettiest powder blushes that I own. We're gonna take this brush, it's the Alter Ego number three, and just tap this on the cheek. Seriously, this goes on. You guys see how quick, and it's like done, it's blended. I have another light pink shade of these that I also like. It's more of a spring shade for me. It's a little bit lighter, it doesn't quite have the punch and the pigment that this one has. This one I think is more suited for my skin tone. Curious to try a few more. I know they have some more that are a little bit deeper, a little more rusty and kind of peachy in tone. Have to pick one up the next time I'm in my Walmart. Okay, let's go with a highlighter next. This one probably won't surprise you guys. I, I kind of feel bad because my favorite highlighter 
I don't know that I want to officially kick it out of its number one spot is the Revlon Skin Lights Highlighter, but this Essence Highlighter, the highlighter in the shade Mesmerizing, is so impressive to me. This is a $4 highlighter that is has outstanding pigment and payoff and a reflective quality that just feels very high-end to me. Packaging, not so much, but the highlighter itself is very, very high-end feeling. I have another shade of this that I also like. It's some more pink tone, but this color in particular, I just think is so, so beautiful. It's the lightest shade that they offer. It's a really nice kind of warm, icy champagne that you can get to be super intense and reflective like this. Or if you're going with a lighter hand, you can definitely scale it back a little bit if you like something more natural but it's not very glittery it just has this really nice natural looking sheen to it that i think is so pretty especially if you have more mature skin and anything too glittery or chunky emphasizes the texture that you have on your cheeks especially as you kind of move in a little bit this one doesn't do that for me it just gives me this beautiful kind of Glow. Okay, let's go on to the brows. So for my brows today, I've talked about this brow pencil before. This is also from the same brand as the blush that we just used. This is from Revolution. This is their Blade Brow. I have the shade Dark Brown. No, it's not Dark Brown. It's just brown. Love this brow pencil. It's such a good one. Now, actually though, before I do that, I'm going to put in a little bit of my e.l.f. Shape and Stay Brow Wax. I kind of feel like this thing has been put on a back burner this last year. I do still really like this. It's super convenient. There's just other brow waxes that I like a little bit more because they kind of give me the waxy kind of prep and also the setting properties. This one's really just like a prep step for me. It really just adds a little bit of something to my brow so I can brush them upright while I fill them in. And then I still need to set them down with something more. It's such a good formula. It's nice and stiff. It's also nice and slim and kind of rectangular. And shape you probably can't see the tip of that but it has this like pinched rectangular shape now we're gonna set those in place with a brow gel this is one of my very favorite drugstore brow gels that reminds me so much of my favorite high-end brow gel this is the NYX the brow glue this one's in the shade medium brown it's pretty much an exact dupe for the refi brow gel that one has a little bit more of a cool tone dark brown color but these aren't super opaque they're kind of a semi sheer tinted brow gel that just gives my brows really good hold it doesn't give them that kind of like waxy look but it also doesn't darken them up so much that they look unnatural okay there we have it brows are finished let's move on to an eyeshadow palette this was very tricky there are a few eyeshadow palettes from the drugstore that i highly recommend and i think their formulas are just as good or comparable to high-end brands i think in my wet n wild color icon palettes the essence six pan little palettes but today we're going to use one that i think is a little bit underrated both by me and kind of by youtube in general and it's from bh cosmetics now they don't offer bh cosmetics at ulta beauty anymore there was a moment where they offered some of their eyeshadow palettes but i didn't notice any there when i looked recently so you can only buy these on the bh cosmetics website however they are extremely affordable and i think the bh cosmetics formula which i've tried many times over the years is super consistently amazing i think their mattes and their shimmers have such great quality they're easy to blend they're pigmented they're really nice and rich and easy to use they've always been one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas that are affordable that remind me of a much more high-end formula so today we're going to use this little one this is just the egypt quad now these i think are seven dollars if they're not on sale bh cosmetics all often does have sales on their website so keep an eye out for those I'm just going to start off with my alter ego at number five we're going to dip into this lighter brown shade now I will say they used to have a lot more variety of palettes. They've discontinued a lot over the years, a lot of really great palettes over the years, which I think is kind of sad. They do still offer the Avocado palette, the Amore and Amalfi, the Lost in Los Angeles palette, some of their kind of travel palettes that I really love, but they have discontinued a lot of those over the years, which always makes me nervous. And I was actually on their website this morning, just looking at what's new with BH Cosmetics because I haven't looked on there for a while. And they didn't have a lot of new releases when it comes to eyeshadows. So I don't know what's going on over there. They're a different kind of brand. They're not quite as like organized with their releases as someone like ColourPop that just is constantly releasing new things and has tons of variety. But I do think their formula is more consistent than ColourPop's formula. Don't get me wrong, I love ColourPop, but I think the BH Cosmetics formula is just, it's underrated. I think it's so good. Nice. Now we're gonna dip into the darker matte brown. This is the Alter Ego number six. Just a kind of smaller blending brush. This looks just like my Sydney Grace. Small blending brush. 
I'm going to dip that and start building up some depth right at this outer corner. Speaking of BH Cosmetics, I still have my Zodiac palette from them. I cannot bring myself to declutter. I don't use it hardly ever, maybe once or twice a year, but I love that palette so much. I think it's been discontinued. I sometimes occasionally will see it popping up on the BH Cosmetics website or on like, I've seen it pop up on Kohl's website before. Anyways, it's hard to find sometimes and I think it might be officially discontinued or at least out of stock. I dip into that same shade with a more dense brush. We're gonna run a little bit of that under the lower lash line and kind of just building up a little bit of a, not really a line, but just connecting the lower to that upper outer corner. Just give it a nice shape. Now we're gonna dip into this bronze right here, this bronze shimmer. Tap that all over the center of the lid. And then we're gonna take the peach, kind of champagne peach shimmer and tap that on the inner third. All right, and there's the finished eye look. Nothing too wild or fancy, but so good. I mean, look at that beautiful blend. It was so easy. Again, I think BH Cosmetics eyeshadow formulas are very underrated. I hope they don't go anywhere. Always makes me nervous when I don't see new releases coming out from them or when they disappear from Ulta's store. Kind of afraid in the back of my mind that they're gonna go the way of Coastal Scents. Anyone remember Coastal Scents? Oh man, I used to love Coastal Scents. Just using my Wet n Wild pencil right now. This one's kind of a given. Is it as good as high-end? I don't know because I don't try anything else because I am just so perfectly satisfied with the Wet n Wild 99 cent pencil. All right, and now for mascara, I'm going to take my Dream Warrior Mascara from Flower Beauty. This is one of my greatest discoveries from 2023. I'm in love with this mascara. It is so fantastic. It does amazing things for my lashes. Probably one of the few mascaras that I'll actually use up before it expires. That doesn't happen very often because I'm trying out makeup so often, but this one I reach for all the time. There we have it, eyes are finished. Let's move on to the lips last. I have just two products that we're gonna be using today. First off, a lip liner. You guys have seen this before. This is the LA Girl Shockwave lip liner in the shade Mauve. Mine is getting awfully small. This comes with me everywhere. It's in my purse nine times out of 10. I actually need to buy another one of these so I can stop transporting it back and forth. I'm just gonna overline with this just a little bit. So I don't do much with this. I usually just overline just a little bit on the top and bottom center and kind of smudge it in. This is every bit as long wearing as my Charlotte Tilbury. Fraction of the price. I think this thing is like four or five dollars. Charlotte Tilbury is like 22. But I love this shade because it goes with absolutely anything. Last, we're gonna top it off with the lip gloss. Now this is the gloss that I just discovered that inspired this entire video. It comes from Wet n Wild. It is their very, very basic Mega Slicks lip gloss. This one is in the shade Attitude Check, which is just kind of like a warm nude pink. I had this on in my car a couple of a couple of days ago. It was just this, nothing else. And I just remember looking in my rear view mirror and thinking, wow, my lips look so nice and pleasant. This, this lip gloss is like a dollar, maybe a dollar 98. Now you don't get a lot of product inside here. In fact, I was looking at this just recently. You only get 0 0.07 ounces. That's about half or even close to a third of what you get in a standard lip gloss. But for the price, it's actually really very nice. Just look how pretty that color in shine is. It's a really pretty semi-opaque pink nude gloss that goes with anything. For a $2 lip gloss, this is very, very impressive. And here we have it. This is the finished makeup look, a full face of affordable makeup that is every bit as good as high-end. What do you guys think? Let me know if you guys have thoughts on some of these products. Maybe they didn't work for you as well as they did for me. I'd love to hear down in the comments below. But hopefully this video gave you guys some ideas on some products that can save you a little bit of money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I have some really fun videos coming your way. I just placed an order with Amazon on some really curious makeup products I'm very excited to try together. Those should be coming within the next few days. And I also have an order coming in from Ulta soon. So let that be another reminder to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you guys again. I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Not like the triangle kind of shape that you sometimes see, but just like a, like a tiny little door for fleas. Stop.